Hello, in this video we look at sequences that limit to zero but their series diverges and what that means is each term as you go farther out approaches zero and limits to zero but if you were to add up all the terms then it goes to infinity and the timing of this video is not coincidental I'm doing it because I just watched two videos from Mark Rober and Mr. Beast and they have a new project out of trying to clean or remove 30 million pounds of trash from the rivers and oceans. And so my analogy to their project in this video is that if everyone picks up a little bit, does a little bit of cleaning the trash from the rivers, beaches, oceans, it's actually pretty minuscule in the scheme of things. But if everybody does it together, the aggregate sums to infinity, or at least to 30 million pounds. And that's the reason I'm doing the video now. Now I have a video, or Theorem 2 in a video that I call Series of Real Numbers. We prove that if a series converges, then the terms must limit to zero. But however, the converse is not true in general. And here are two classic examples. The sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n. These terms limit to 0, but this sum or this series uh, goes to infinity. And here too, the limit of this term goes to 0, but the series diverges, goes to infinity. We're going to prove each of those. So first, the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n equals 0. Okay, so first let's prove that the terms go to 0. And that for a given epsilon greater than 0, there exists an n in the positive integers such that 1 over n is less than this given epsilon, which is positive. No matter how small or how big, we can find an integer large enough that this is less than that. So now let little n be bigger than big n. And I put that big n is really a function of epsilon, right? It depends how small or how big or, you know, what size this is to, to how big of an n we need. And so that's why capital N is a function of epsilon. Then the absolute value of a n minus what we think the limit is, which is zero, which is this, so it's one over n minus zero, which is really just one over n, which is less than one over capital N, the way we've defined it, and that's less than epsilon. So for whatever epsilon we pick, these, the, these uh, values can be arbitrarily small. So that says that a n, or one over n, limits to zero. So now let's show that the series diverges or goes to infinity. So let's assume that this series is finite, meaning it converges to some value L. And we'll call that the limit of this series. And it's less than infinity. So if we were to write these terms out, then L is equal to 1 plus a half plus one third plus one fourth all the way forever. But if we change every other term, so it, this one-third, if we make one-fourth, so this just got a little bit smaller, right? In the same way, instead of one-fifth, we make it one-sixth. Instead of one-seventh, we make it one-eighth. So every other one, we make it one bigger. So this sequence is actually smaller than this sequence. So this sequence is less than or equal to L. But if we switch these two terms, put... Oh, first of all, I'm sorry. So then we carry it down, and this is one half, this is one third, one fourth, one fifth, etc. So it's actually, if we were to switch these two terms, that's L again. So it's one half L. But this is a contradiction, right? L is, is bigger than or equal to the uh, one half plus L. That's a contradiction. So that says our assumption that this series is finite is false. So it has to be infinite. And we've proved it. So thus the series goes to infinity. 
Now this one I find so fascinating. The square root is what's called uh, increasing at a decreasing rate. So each for each n, it increases, but the increase gets smaller, smaller, and smaller. So let's look at those increases. And that's what we're going to let a n be. But first, let's show that this limits to zero. So the limit as n goes to infinity of a n, which is this. Now let's multiply this times 1, which is what this is. And then when you multiply this out, you get this. But if we let n go to infinity, this denominator gets arbitrarily large, which makes this whole fraction go to zero. So it does limit to zero. Now let's look at the partial sum of this sequence and we'll call it Sn. And that's the sum from i equals 1 to n of a i. So that's a1 plus all the way to a n. Now if we were to put the terms in here, that's 2 minus 1. Next term is uh, square root of 3 minus 2 all the way to n, square root of n plus 1 minus square root of n. But this is a telescoping sum, right? Every, the terms cancel. So what's left is this minus 1 and the square root of n. That's the partial sum. Now let's look at the limit of this partial sum, which is this. Limit of n goes to infinity of, the, of s of n, which is this. But the square root goes to infinity. So this series goes to infinity. And so there we've proved two series where the terms or the sequence converges to zero, but the series goes to infinity. And again, this is an analogy of you know, each term just contributing very, very small, a minuscule amount, but the sum goes to infinity. And that's the way this uh, team sees the uh, project that if everyone contributes very little, then the sum or the aggregate can be quite large. So I hope you check out uh, Mark Rober's and Mr. Beast's videos and contribute time or money, either one. So I hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.